Hello everybody, I'm Jackie K. Cooper and this is my Entertainment Rundown Part 2. I've already put, you know, put up a video of three of the movies that I saw this past weekend, but this is the second trio of movies that I saw, so that's why it's Part 2. The first movie I want to talk about is a movie titled The Sun is Also a Star. And I think that turned me off from the beginning. I just thought that was such a cliche. The sun is also a star. Uh, okay, I get it. Then they give you a little speech in the movie about the sun is also a star. Okay, I get it, I get it, I get it. But this movie is about a young woman played by Yara Shahidi, uh, who is going to speak with uh, officials of the government. Her family is being deported. They've been in the States for nine years but they didn't have, never re got, you know, resident status, so they're being deported to Jamaica. But she does not want to go back to Jamaica. She wants to stay in the USA, so she is seeking desperately for somebody to, to you know, plead her case for her. And she accidentally meets up with a guy. He is going to an interview with somebody who's going to recommend him for Dartmouth College. He wants to go there. He's going to go, you know, study to be a doctor. His family are Korean immigrants, and they want their son to be a doctor. You know, she find out later in the movie he don't want to be a doctor. He wants to be a poet. Uh, she don't want to go back to Jamaica. She wants to be an astrologer, or I think that's, you know, study of the stars, whatever it's called. But, you know, they meet. I can say accidentally. And before you can say, hey, my name is whatever, he says, I think I could make you fall in love with me in 24 hours. And she'd say, no, you can't. Okay, it's more romantic than that, but that's basically what they say. And then her meeting uh, sets up another meeting the next day. His meeting gets postponed to the next day. So, hey, They've got 24 hours, and they can see if his prediction works. Now, this is based on a young adult novel, and I will tell you, I am a romantic. I believe in romance. I believe in, you know, love at first sight, etc. But this is a little extreme, and it's just cheesy to me all the way through. I didn't like anything about it. You know, I'm sorry, you know. Uh, the sun is also a star, the moon is also a rock, the oven is also a heater. I mean, there are so many similes that, that you can, can make. And this movie just applies to me, one cliche after another. I want for me with these actors, they've got enough chemistry between them, not anything great, you, you're not overpowered by the chemistry between the two of them. It just did not work for me. It's rated PG-13 for profanity, and get ready for this. I scored it 3 out of 10. Now, I know there'll be some of you who say, oh my gosh, he doesn't appreciate, you know, this, this, the romance in this. I've loved romance in movies. I just didn't love the romance in this movie. It just didn't do it for me. The next movie is a movie that you'll have to search out. Uh, it's based on true story. It's called Trial by Fire. And it's, it's a movie that is definitely uh, anti-death penalty because it's based on a case in Texas where a person was charged with a crime and you know, sentenced to the death penalty. And it shows what he goes through, everything leading up to that, the protagonist is played by Jack O'Connell, uh, and then you know he he's convicted of crime, ends up in prison, and this woman, uh, mother, divorced mother of two, uh, played by Laura Dern, she learns about his case and she starts visiting him in prison, and then she is trying to to find out if it is possible that he was wrongly convicted. And that's what the whole movie is about. Laura Dern and Jack O'Connell are just super in this film. And it's got tension and drama and all the things that you, that you need in a movie. And the fact that it's based on a true story 
is, you know, adds more credence to it. So it's something that could be of interest to you. The film is rated R for profanity, violence, and nudity. I scored it 7 out of 10. You know, jumped back up two levels above the average 5. But I really got engrossed in this movie. I cared about the people. I cared about the outcome of the film. I've always been a Laura Dern fan. She's just a natural actress. You, you never feel like she's acting. You feel like she actually is the person that she is on screen. So, you know, you may have to hunt this down. I think it's playing in limited places, but look out for it. It's called Trial by Fire. And then finally, you know, I may not have been a romantic on the, a, the Sun is also a star, but there's a movie called A Dog's Journey. And I saw the first two movies with Dennis Quaid and the dog named Bailey. His name is Ethan in the movie. I can't remember, but it was all about the dog and reinc reincarnation, etc. And coming back. And so I was hooked from the time I saw the trailer. Uh, you know, it shows Dennis Quaid and his wife, played by Mark Helgenberger, and uh, their daughter-in-law lives with them. Their son has been killed in an accident. She's played by Betty Gilpin, and uh, she has a, a daughter by, by their son named CJ. And Ethan, Dennis Quaid, you know, tells the dog Bailey, he said, Bailey, your, you know, your, your purpose in that life uh, and whatever, you've got to take care of CJ. You've got to take care of CJ. And shortly into the movie, the mother takes CJ and moves away, and Ethan is still saying to the dog, you've got to take care of CJ, and through a series of reincarnations, you see whether that works out or not. But they have got the greatest dogs in this movie. I mean, they, they seem to know everything the actors are saying to them, you know. Uh, and then Josh Gad is the voice of the dog, of Bailey, and then several other dogs after that and he's perfect he's got the perfect you know voice i just keep remembering that he's the guy who voiced the snowman in the movie frozen so he's perfect to voice the the dog's voice but the dogs themselves i don't know how they had the casting call and got these most perfect dogs but they certainly did you know get the right ones for each area of the lives of bailey so, I mean, it brought tears to my eyes. I got emotional about it. It's, it's not a classic by, you know, any means. It's not old yeller or something like that. But it's a good, sweet movie, and it's enjoyable all the way through. It's rated PG for mild profanity. I scored it 7 out of 10. So two sevens uh, there for you. But... That was the sixth of my six movies that I saw this past weekend. It's a great weekend when you get to see that many movies. Uh, look down here and see my face. Hit the subscribe button. You know, ring the bell for notifications. All of that you do. But for now, you know, that's all that I've got new movie-wise. Coming up next week, we're going to be talking about Aladdin, Booksmart, and Brightburn. I think those will get your attention. But I'll be talking about those then. But for now, this has been Jackie K. Cooper's Entertainment Rundown, Part 2.